Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're going to create some spinning text in DaVinci Resolve. You can of course also do this in uh, Blackmagic's Fusion. That's normally uh, the program I would use. Uh, but there we go, we're going to create it directly in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I created a new project and I've set it to 30 frames per second. Now, um, bear in mind, if you have a different frame rate for your project, then you may want to alter the timings in terms of the keyframes later on. Okay, so then let's drag in a fusion composition and make it a bit longer. If you can't find it in here, it means you don't have the latest version of uh, DaVinci Resolve installed. Uh, then let's head over to the Fusion tab and let's dive right into it and add a text 3D node. And for whatever reason, it was grayed out. That happens from time to time, but there it is. Uh, and let's display that in the viewport. Uh, and by the way, to get this toolbox, it's um, control spacebar on Windows. I'm not too sure about Apple. Um, so let's add in some placeholder text, like so. Zoom out a bit. Uh, let's ensure that the um, lighting has been enabled. So the default lighting. And let's do it like this. We're going to add a bit of extrusion, like so. And then I'm going to change the font to something I prefer, something like Roboto. I use that a lot on my in my tutorials, but if you don't have it installed, yeah, just choose something else. Then we're going to uh, change the spacing between the characters. I always like it a bit more spaced out. Okay, like so. Um, so the next thing we want to do is make the text spin. That's the main purpose, right? So we're going to add a transform 3D node, like so. And let's display that. Uh, the parameter we want to change is the Y rotation, as you can see here. So the effect we want to have is basically that the text is initially stationary for a second or so, well, for exactly a second. Uh, and then we're going to make it spin within sort of 20 frames, and then it goes back to the original position. Okay, so the way to do that is very simple. We add a keyframe here. We move ahead to frame 30. Add another keyframe, so it means Y rotation remains at zero for 30 frames. Then we head over to frame 50, like so, and we're going to enter a value of 360, one full turn. Okay, uh, you can't see anything changing here, it's because it's a full turn; it's back to its original position. But in the meanwhile, it will have gone through a full rotation. So let's zoom out a bit and. If you don't see this, by the way, the spline graph, uh, just ensure you've got it enabled here uh, at the top. So we're going to smooth this out by hitting this little smooth button, sort of an easing in, easing out type of action. And then what we're going to do is basically um, copy this over, essentially. We're going to loop this movement so that it will just continue on. Because right now what we've got is this. It spins and then stays stationary. But what we want to have is for that to continue and in the meanwhile for the text to be swapped out. So let's select all the keyframes we've got and then simply hit the set loop button, like so. And now it will just continue on. Very handy. There you go. So now the next thing we want to do is to swap out the text. Right? So to that end, let's go back here, uh, we're going to add a little expression here. Now, it's not absolutely necessary to use expressions. You could simply keyframe this. So basically, uh, what you want to do is uh, head over to, I think it's frame 40. That's right in the middle of the turn, right? When the text is at the back, essentially. And then swap out the text there. So add a keyframe there and put in new text. Now. I don't really like doing it that, like that because if you want, ever want to change it, it is all a bit finicky. So what I do is normally add an expression. So we're going to add an expression. Instead of typing it here, uh, I'm going to type it in um, uh, Notepad or Notepad++, a little free app. Oh, you can see here my previous work. So what we're going to do is add an expression. We start with a colon. Uh, because basically we have multiple statements in there and they need to start with a colon. And I'm typing in my array, I'm going to create a little array, equals, open curly brackets, and then some text. Welcome, that will be the first tr string. And two, spinning, whatever. 
text. Awesome. Uh, you may want to have some better text than this, somewhat more inspiring, but in any case, right, you get the drift. Then we basically need to create an index. Index uh, equals, uh, because basically what we want to do is return the right string at the right time. So we want to return string one at the right time, then string two, three, etc. So what we're going to do is index equals floor, i.e. rounded time, down time divided by 50 plus one. So what this basically means is that at time one, frame one, it will be one divided by 50, uh, which is very small, and round it down, and then it will be zero. Uh, zero but the first index in a, an ar array starts at one, so I add one, so it will return one at frame one, and it will stay at that four, well, until it hits 50, because then it will be 50 divided by 50, round it down, equals one, plus one, and then we'll go to two. When it gets to 100, we'll go to 3, etc. Okay, now there's one little issue, right? So if we go down here, we want really this to swap out the text at frame 40 when it's in the middle of the spin. So we need to create a little offset, and we simply do that by putting some brackets around time. Oops. Some brackets around time, and then within the brackets, plus 10. That's the offset. Then semicolon, and then we're going to simply return the element of the array. My array, and then the index, with the squared brackets, there we go. If you don't understand all of this, don't worry, just copy it over, uh, you know, pause the video, copy it over. Just bear in mind, this 50 is important, and the 10 is important. If you have any different keyframes in terms of the rotation, then that those will need to correspond to this, or rather the other way around. If the keyframes are different, then the values here will be different. Okay, so we're going to copy this over, uh, go back to resolve, add it in, there we go. Uh, you already saw an expression uh, in here uh, because this was the second time I went through it in the video, right? So I forgot to edit it out. Um, so now what we get is the following. Welcome to spinning text. Done. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, what we're then going to do is add a merge node because we want to add a camera. So merge node and then a camera, camera 3D, and pipe that into the merge node. We can quickly display the, uh, oops, we display the merge node and then we change the perspective of the camera and what we need to do is basically move the camera out a bit so that we can see the text so maybe somewhere here okay um, what you may want to do as well is if you want to add a bit of perspective in here what you can do is basically say okay use target the target is 0 to 0 to 0 basically where the text is uh, 0 comma 0 comma 0 um, and then basically add a bit of Y offset and then it gives you that tiny bit of perspective. And you don't have to do that, but it, it can look good. What we also want to do is add a point light or whatever light you like. Um, pop it in here and then let's switch over to the perspective view and position the light where we want it, somewhere here, back to the camera view. There we go, that looks pretty good. So what we want to do next is add in a renderer to render it out. I'm going to set it to OpenGL, not absolutely mandatory, but I like it. I'm going to enable the lighting. And what I'm also going to do is in the output channels, I'm going to put the uh, tick the super sampling, right? Um, display that because otherwise you can get these jagged edges. So this is looking good. For now, I don't want to display the uh, checker underlay. So I'm disabling that to see what I'm doing. So this will work the same, it can render it out. For now, I don't wanna see the spline editor, I wanna have some space. So now we wanna add, add that blur, sort of that, uh, what you saw in the example. So uh, if we go to say frame 30, um, let's make it frame 40 or 39, whatever. Uh, here we want to have that blurred out to make the transition somewhat seamless when we swap out the text at frame 40. So what we're going to do is add some directional blur. 
right? And display it here. We are going to set that to centered, and you can see here what happens, right? But I want to make this dependent on the rotation. I don't want there to be any blur when it's um, uh, when there's no rotation, right? When the rotation is set at zero, when the stat uh, text is static. Um, but I want it to gradually increase as it turns around, right? So I want to essentially make it dependent on the rotation. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to pin the transform here back to directional blur, go to length, right click, expression, and then pick whip it to the Y rotation. Now, this is not exactly what we want, right? Uh, because this is way, way, way too large. So first of all, let's go back to frame zero, right? Um, what we really want to do is have a type of sign function. In a sign function, right, uh, you, in a full cycle, it will go up, down, uh, so it will gradually go up to one, down to zero again, to minus one, and up to uh, zero again, right? It's standard sign function. We want to have half of that sign function, basically, that it gradually goes up and down again to zero. So what we'll do, basically, is add here a little, and I'll zoom in a bit, Add here sign and take that value, put brackets around it, so it's a Y rotation. However, the sign function within DaVinci Resolve, at least at this uh, in this particular node, or, or most of the nodes actually, uh, expects radians rather than degrees. So we need to convert that with a simple rad function. So rad and then close brackets at the end. Uh, sorry, you can't, there we go. Add another bracket here. So that in principle, uh, would already uh, work, but um, the timing won't be quite right because it will go basically the full cycle. It will go to one and then to zero and then to minus one and then to zero. So what we want to do is basically divide it by two, right? So that we only have half the cycle. And then uh, basically we get something like this and it may be a bit slow to render, so let's actually go quickly, move forward to 30. You see it increasing, increasing way too large, but the timing is right, and then decreasing, decreasing back to zero. So what we want to do really is the overall resu result, we divide it by four, right? And if you then look at the results, say at around you know frame 40, when it's an, at its max, you see something like this. So that's looking good. So for your benefit, I'm just going to quickly Grab this, copy this, and pop this into Notepad in case you missed it. So there you go. This is the final function. So just pause the screen if you want to copy it over. And uh, let's go back to DaVinci Resolve. OK, so we're nearly done with this. Uh, let's add a tiny bit of glow to it, uh, like so. And then we're going to add a time speed. I'm adding the time speed um, because I want to add a delayed version of the image, of the, well, the output here, to itself. Um, that will basically give that sort of laggy feel you saw in that example. So you have the movement and then a few frames thereafter, uh, you have the movement again, so to speak. So what we're going to do here is take the output of the time speed and merge it back onto the output of the original, so effectively we're basically putting the time speed or the delayed version or the version that will be delayed on top of the original version. So here in the time speed, we're going to add a delay of three frames. Okay. So um, if we then display the merge here and go back to something like frame uh, 32, or three, there you can see, you see the original one and the delayed one merged together. Now, um, I do want to make one change. I want to ensure that the effect is um, mostly seen when it's f sort of fully rotated around, like at 180 degrees, um, much like we did with the directional blur. So what we can basically do is make the blend dependent on the directional blur. So let's go to the directional blur. Oh, I've already got a pin there, which is great. And go to the merge, right click on the blend, expression, and link that link that to the length. And then basically let's multiply it by two or maybe two and a half. Right? And if we then go to say frame 40, that's sort of where it is at 
the max and then you can see okay the blend will be 0 0.6 but you know you can change it to your liking so um, let's have a quick look at what uh, the result will be but before we do that we need to add it to the original media out which I accidentally deleted so I need to create a new media out there we go and hook the merge into that to ensure we can see everything on the edit page back to the edit page and let's have a quick render and uh, it's on so let's get back in a moment when everything has been rendered so that's been rendered so let's have a quick look bang and that is looking pretty good um, I do actually want to work a tiny bit on the text let's have a look it was a Roboto yeah that's uh, here uh, I actually want to set this to light because I find this all a bit too severe the letters were way too thick so uh, let's do another quick preview so let's have a look full screen yeah much much better okay so we're nearly done the only last thing i really want to do is add a bit of color correction i want to uh, basically add a bit of color to the delayed version so i'm going to add a color corrector it's not going to be anything fancy i'm just going to add a bit of uh, toning to it maybe a tiny bit of blue i do want to see what i'm doing so let's go to frame 40 there we go I think something like this maybe even a bit more let's do it like this and then let's have a final preview and um, let's do it okay let's have a look at the result I think that is looking pretty cool now of course you can do lots more you can do a lot more to the text for instance right um, if we have a look here right you could have a different color for the bevel versus the main material and this that in the other but I'll leave that to you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time take care bye bye